hello traders welcome to this video scalping and day trading the futures currency markets the, if you haven't already considered currency futures markets is never been a better time at the moment the world is seeing some extreme volatility due, due to the coronavirus scare and we're seeing massive volumes on the equities futures markets and the issue with that for many uh, uh, traders is that the margin requirements have gone through the roof for an example if you trade the ES many brokers now are uh, because of a CME restrictions or requirements they require a margin of $8,000 now they do say you do have an intraday margin of 25% of that but if you choose to trade the globe session and even if you consider trading during the New York hours the volatility is so great the risk is enormous and when it comes to the futures currency markets as you're about to see uh, even in these volatile times there's some fantastic trading opportunities which we're going to go through so I'll briefly explain why you should consider these markets and even if you've considered them in the past now is a good time to come back to them now you can also trade the Forex markets and there's some advantages there such as lower margins and what we require on futures the challenge can be with the Forex markets is the spread of course it, you know you're really paying through the nose effectively with the commissions the spreads that you really do pay uh, so you know you do have other options but if you're a serious futures trader and you enjoy the low commissions that we pay as futures traders let's have a look at this market now we do have to pull up the risk disclaimer there is a risk in trading don't trade with the rent money and in these extreme uh, volatile times of volatility of course you may wish to be sitting on the side sidelines sometimes the best action is no action okay just sitting on the sidelines and waiting for the markets to settle down now it also it doesn't really matter when you watch this video even if the market is quietened down which we know it will eventually uh, the what I'm about to show you is just as applicable now also if you don't trade the futures market so if you do trade Forex or if you trade stocks or other futures some of the strategies and ideas are exactly applicable also perhaps it's not quite the right way of saying it but they're applicable to those markets as well and as always these videos are all real and unedited so uh, if I make any stuff ups or fluff up on the way you'll have to forgive me now very very quick 30 second advertisement well in a way this isn't even an advertisement if you don't have one of my free training manuals please click on the link below and download my training manual free of charge and also my ebook the truth about day trading and even more importantly make sure you please subscribe to my youtube channel now as I've got uh, now over 8,000 traders around the world that are members I've got over 200 that are in my monthly coaching class I have two two-hour live sessions a week where I'm coaching traders on how to trade the markets and you can uh, purchase my program for only $197 that's it all of my indicators is now over 15 16 uh, setups there's literally hundreds of handouts there's now over 300 training videos not the ones that are available on YouTube I've got over 200 there but these are the training ones now you don't have to learn them all as I say to all new members you start with one strategy and you build from there my indicators are free and the only other uh, if I can say upsell or other costs is if you choose to join my coaching okay and that's totally optional and that's totally up to you you won't be called by a telemarketer 197 and it is a gold mine there's nothing else like it so end of ad let's now get into uh, uh, trading the currency markets first of all as I said a lot of what I talk about is applicable to any market every market has its own personality whether you're trading futures Forex or stock so these are some of the considerations that we have first of all the account size required or the account size required by your broker now if you're using a smaller stop uh, you know, or if you've got a really good broker you may not need a huge amount in your account but these are serious considerations because you never ever want to risk any more than two percent 
uh, and as you build your account and you start trading five and ten contracts over time you want to drop that down to one percent yes your return on equity will be lower but it's much easier to trade now the next thing is does the market that we're trading have a good daily trading range does it trend well that's really important is that every new trader or or trader that's struggling with trading you should only trade with the trend initially and we've got some brilliant CT trades uh, counter trend trading methodologies that kick butt every day however you start with one strategy and you build from there and this is one of the mistakes that mo almost every trader makes okay they, they're overwhelmed they, they're trying to learn too many setups too many strategies what you want to really do is focus on one chart one time frame and one market to begin with and only one or two setups now does it have a good volume we might have a good trend for an example we will also look at the pound the British pound currency futures now it's got a lower trading volume and it's got a great range but it can be thinly traded which means if you wanted to trade 10 to 20 contracts at a time that can be an issue so that's one thing you do need to consider what are the best hours to trade uh, with the currency futures you can trade uh, around 23 hours a day of course the Forex markets are 24 but still very competitive 23 hours a day five days a week what are the best chart time frames now with the best chart time frames it'll vary from market to market for an example if you're trading say using a Renko chart you might use a one or two tick Renko uh, if you're trading the currency futures if you're trading the futures market sorry the Forex markets directly the cash market you're going to we're going to talk in pips but because I'm talking uh, futures contracts I talk in ticks by the way now uh, with some markets you have to like the yen uh, I'd recommend you consider and even though we've got a lot of volatility all year round you might have to use a two tick Renko which we're going to look at that very quickly today as well what are the best strategies to trade well I take a, a leaf out of Richard Dennis's book uh, where he says this that if a strategy doesn't work on one market uh, he won't trade it it should work on all markets however there are some strategies for example when you've got a really good trend following or a good trending market okay we want to stick with the trend following strategies but the strategy should work on all markets and what are the best targets and stops now there's actually a whole range of exit strategies taking profits that we could use you know we can go for previous swing highs we can use the pivots we can trail uh, I recommend if you're a one contract trader that you start off by trading or going for a fixed target profit you want to get the cash register ringing as you uh, develop and build your account start trading to then you can consider trailing but there's uh, we've got over 16 different trailing strategies by the way you only use one or two you might just use a fixed target and maybe an ATR you find something that really suits you and I think it's really important traders in the end it really comes down it's like which is the best time frame to trade it comes down to what suits your personality and of course I teach you uh, that but that's beyond the purpose of today I'm just going to give you some ideas today uh, what are the best stops as you'll see on the charts I like to uh, place my stop under the closest swing low or above the closest swing high in a fast moving market if you've got a runaway market that can be problematic okay can cause issues that is your stop can sometimes be a little too large but they're considerations that you do need to think about now the other thing here is is uh, no doubt I'll also have members watching this because they're on my YouTube channel so if you remember but don't forget traders as I say become a specialist All right in other words uh, with this following chart and this the next couple of charts are on my Google Drive and in the folder called cheat sheets okay you'll find them there this is this is only one of the pages there's many different markets to trade initially focus on one market and probably the market that I'd recommend with the currency futures would be to start off with would be the uh, uh, the euro followed by the yen and maybe then the pound 
now look at this chart it says 1250 per tick on both the euro and the yen that's now been lowered to sorry about that excuse me one moment sorry about that bit of a coffin so that's now been lowered uh, and that has been for some time 625 a tick so the three markets that I'm interested in are the euro the yen and the pound at 625 a tick now the next thing we are interested in is the average volume of these contracts so on the euro the average volume is around 200,000 on the yen 160,000 and the pound is 118,000 contracts per day now at the moment with the coronavirus fears we're seeing much greater than that up to three times the volume in some of these but that will settle down however the, the, the attractive part and by the way with that the attractive part is there's still very tradable markets even with these extreme times but this is one of the great benefits for traders is that the tick value is lower meaning that typically if you're trading with say uh, an eight tick stop and an eight tick stop and I'll show you this when we go to the charts in a moment on a two tick Renko is only $50 now building the Commission so you've only got a $55 stop which makes it very very attractive so therefore uh, really you only want to be allowing around two and a half you only need to allow around two and a half to three thousand dollars per contract you trade now this is uh, from the uh, this is a trade station margin and margins can vary subject to the market volatility but this is pr still pretty accurate so on the pound uh, around 2300 us on the euro 2300 and the yen is 33 well I happen to know at the moment it's actually 3100 so you can see they're around the three thousand dollar mark and you can be trading these contracts now when we look at volume overall this is going back and so these are the markets on the left that I track and, and trades a number of these but if we look at this here the yen and the euro I'm always interested in this is going back to last year we can see there 144,000 sorry 176,000 on the uh, euro futures contract that day and 144 on the yen going to the 13th of the 12th 13th of uh, December 2019 I had there uh, 368 and uh, uh, 215,000 so you can see we've got really good volume great liquidity which uh, lowers the uh, the slippage etc now if we then look at the moment 7th of March uh, where we're really seeing a lot of volatility we're seeing there on the euro we've got uh, 419,000 this particular day is a little bit quieter we've seen bigger volumes than and 334,000 now we want to know the volumes also because that will give us an idea on the size of the range candle or the Renko or the tick chart that we're trading so these are very important considerations as well now talking about um, our account size I mentioned here that what's really important here traders is the size of our stop which relates to the account size so if you've got an eight to nine tick stop plus your commission let's just say that sixty dollars two percent you need three thousand dollars don't buy in to the story that um, brokers say look you only need one thousand or eight hundred dollars to trade uh, and that's all you need because what's two percent sixty dollars if you've got a sixty dollar stop uh, you're looking then at about a 7% risk if you're only putting 800 in your account that's just crazy you're gonna blow your account so it's very very important that we manage your and your risk and your account size now the different types of chart types we've got time volume tick range and Renko I love both tick range and Renko and you can use all of these of course when you're trading the currency futures now if we're uh, trading a two tick Renko and we're going to look at some of these in a moment uh, and using a buy sell stop waiting for what I call a t1 confirmation or three high closes we're going to have an eight tick stop now eight ticks at uh, 625 is 50 
$60 so your stop size is fairly good and a 10 tick target is 6250 right but we're going to vary those targets depending on where in the trend we enter the trade okay and I'll give you some examples of that now what I believe is really important traders is that you have a goal you've got a target to aim for and what I said is that a poor man or woman sort of man or woman without a cent but a man or woman without a dream and I really think that this is essential that you set a target that is large if you're not achieving $200 a day I'm going to show you how you can do that if you're willing to put the work in and as will says here set a goal so big you can't achieve it till you grow into the person you can you can master the art of day trading because this is not rocket science but the challenge is, is that a lot of traders think that they're into that, that they're committed to trading but in fact they're only just interested they're not willing to do the work and if what's really great nowadays is we can use a simulator as long as we like but there's only one way to master the art of trading and that's doing it the right way to start with when your uh, why is big enough when you've got enough compelling reasons the how will appear and I love this statement over here I can is 100 times more important than IQ and as you're about to see them when we get to the charts this ain't rocket science but it comes still comes down to being committed putting in the hard yards as far as uh, you know using a simulator and mastering mastering one setup and giving yourself 30 to 60 to 90 days to master that one setup unfortunately so many of they want to pick it up and the master it I've even got traders now would be watching this and I've already hung up and going on to the next thing okay because they're looking for what we call the shiny object syndrome you know what the number one thing in trading is practicing the fundamentals every day every single day practicing the fundamentals and a lot of traders aren't willing to do that checking the red flag news announcements going through your chart patterns checking your daily goals you know traders you know winning traders will do the things that losing traders won't do but anyway back to this let's just say we target $200 a day and I'll show you how to do this in a moment what this spreadsheet shows me is that I've, if I've got no more than 2% risk per trade which is $60 and I'm earning $200 a day and I'll give you some ideas how to do this so I'll show you in a moment okay you can see here that and on this spreadsheet you can only start trading two contracts when you double your money so we're using the markets money so by week end of um, week three we're now up to trading two contracts what this means traders is that by week uh, nine and ten by about uh, actually we start of week ten we're now earning ten thousand dollars a week you see the attractive part about the currency futures is you've got a lower margin requirements uh, for an example if you're trading the ES you should have in your account six thousand dollars and to be averaging 200 a day which means it's going to take you 16 to 17 weeks to get to the same target if you've got the same income opportunity now what if we want to be conservative and what if your goals not 200 a day and by the way even if you've got 20 30 40 thousand traders you start off on the sim and you only ever start with one contract you've got to earn the right to go to two contracts this is the only way can you imagine for 10 to 11 weeks you've um, increased your account over that particular time to 45,000 the confidence and the rules and the the discipline muscle that you've built over that time it's incredible this is how you really do it so you start with one contract once you've earned the right gone through the simulator then you go to trading one now what if you feel that's not for you or it's too high or you need to develop the confidence well let's just say you start off by only earning once we go live with one contract only $100 a day let's be really super conservative it's going to take you there around 23 weeks 22 23 weeks to get to that 10,000 a week income only with only $100 a day per contract my account size is now upwards of 66 70 thousand uh, dollars I'm trading there technically and we'll talk about this in a moment but around 20 contracts to do that so I'm earning two grand a day with 20 contracts 
now let me say this traders when you're getting up there you're really getting up there on trading these markets with 20 contracts okay when you look at mark depth but yes there are a few traders that are putting their putting out their 20 30 40 contracts but that's when you may start to consider either go for a larger target per day when you're when you're only trading 10 contracts a day or, or that's the time we're going to start considering the ES the black gold oil and other markets as well or you split your trades between trade or you start trading a couple of different markets at time at time because here if you wanted to get up here where you're earning there um, 50 grand a week you're trading a hundred lots at a time so okay so there are some challenges with that on some of the smaller markets okay but it's a good problem to have so how do we actually achieve our 200 plus net per day well we've got two setups called the 2b and the 34b so members watching this uh, 2b and 30 34b every day of the week and your 30 uh, your 2b these members you could even consider sitting those out just taking your 2b's and 34b's and particularly when you have on your anchor chart a 34b or above or on your anchor chart to a 21b or above and executing on your entry chart that will give you the larger moves so if we consider scalping we could be down here and this is before commission so you're going to take off uh, let's just say there are $30 in commissions okay so you've got around $230 uh, net after commissions if you pay upwards of uh, five dollars you should be under that but you know these are uh, scalping trades when we get in and at times of course we're going to scalp two ticks sometimes four it just depends on the conditions but this is how we get to that and so we're going to be waiting if you're using an anchor chart the anchor charts executing on your entry give you a much larger target to achieve now something to ponder on I started to mention here what if you to target only 100 a day net from two markets now let me say with the experienced traders in the room to do that traders you need to be um, and no matter which market so if you're going for one market with 200 you want to be targeting 300 you do need to allow for the tough days for the down days okay so here we'd be going for 150 a day looking at the end of a week to have average $100 a day now here if you're just going for 100 you can just trade the best of the best two B's where you should be up there at an 85% win loss ratio just trading setting aside the two BDs that's for the members just for the listening here don't trade the two BDs which are lower probability to stick with your two B's because you've got this now if you go for your two B's and nine ticks okay two of those trades there's your commission you only need two trades per day uh, if you are uh, say if you're trading two markets just two 34 or 21 B's or higher on your anchor charts and there it is as a minimum okay this is how you do it and so it's a matter of really traders and for the for those that are new to my channel is that we want to be trading in the direction of an anchor chart and this is one of the key mistakes that most traders are making is that they're not willing to look at the higher time frame this is the secret to capitalizing on the market so let's now have a look and I want to give you a couple of ideas here on the charts now first of all uh, what we're looking at here is the British pound uh, and we're looking at a 34 tick chart now at the moment we're in the what we call the globe session the after hours market now today and I'm just going to look over here now so far today uh, with the pound it's only traded 7,300 contracts during the overnight session where with the uh, euro where is that here let me uh, with the yen we've traded uh, sorry just got a 67,000 and with the euro so I've got figures bouncing up around the markets got stuff going all over the place where's it gone uh, sorry I'm just uh, 
there we go it's 44,000 so that's interesting the yen well of course it is the Asian session so that's why we've got 67,000 contracts and the uh, the euros only traded 44,000 but still some good volume so this is using a tick chart so if we look at the tick chart and let me just change this for you yep okay so we can go here we can see now why aren't you doing that let me just just go to adjust some of your traders here we go now it will work all right so this is a tick chart when you're scalping or day trading and you can see these moves here now this is uh, probably around red flag and a few other announcements here which you got to watch you can see there that the tick charts for scalpers can be a little untidy and this is where then if we go and look at the Renko charts they become a lot easier to trade now there is a secret to trading the uh, Varenko's and one of the secrets is is knowing where to count from and where to place your buy stop so what you can actually do we have a saying in, in our uh, uh, business that get ready get set go as soon as we see our first green candle or reversal candle we get ready and we'll put a buy stop in and we've got a special way that we calculate where it goes okay now this is a one tick Renko on the pound okay now that right there is what we call a 2b here's another 2b and that's a 2b and this is a typical ABC and what you want to be doing and blind Freddy can see this that and there is a losing trade but there is a nice winning trade there is a winning trade there remember earlier traders that I said we want to go for a minimum of eight ticks because five trades of eight ticks is going to gross us 250 less commissions we've hit our 200 plus and you can see there with all of these we've actually hit our target now there is a stop out and that particular let me just see if that was a 2b uh, let me just see here yes traders so that is a 2b there as well so you would have been and there is another nice winning trade now this is the pound so if you're trading just a couple of contracts uh, you can easily um, uh, uh, trade the pound and let's have a look though if you want to trade a few more let's go and have a look at the uh, euro now what we're looking at here with the euro and this is the globex session as well let me whiz down here let's just go to the main uh, session to the New York session so this is a one tick now that time frame from there uh, where are we here so this is 10 a.m. and that's a whole 15 minutes okay so you've got plenty of time now with any futures or, or sorry any any Forex type market they, they can be very susceptible of course to anything what are call what we call red flag news announcements okay so you've just got to be really cautious here. let me just turn those little white dots off okay so here though you uh, if we put a buy stop sorry a sell stop my apologies we would have a sell stop in at that level right there that one two three four five six seven now that only moved down seven ticks means we would only walk away with three or four ticks in that trade and our stop would go one tick above now if I was to take this divergence trade that I've got here a lower low uh, my stop would be one tick below okay uh, and so this is the one tick we had a trade there there and there so easily you've romped your uh, eight ticks in there there we had a shorter trade okay and we have a saying in our business follow the goal now these are the areas that you've got to be careful of and I want you to write this down do I have a fanning of the EMA such as this here that's the fanning no we didn't but let's go and have a look at now the yen trader so what I'm looking at here is a two tick Renko and what I should have said sorry just going back to uh, that trade there that, that chart there trading a one tick Renko means that you're only going to have if you put a buy stop in above my three candles you're only going to have a six tick stop which is 3750 okay so if you can trade a lower time frame in the direction of a and let me just expand this one out I'm only interested in trading in the direction of the trend 
here let me just go over here for a sec so for an example that trade this trade right here is this here okay and so we're only interested in executing trades on the entry chart in the direction of the trend of the higher time frame so you actually had a trade there and I can already tell you, um, you you definitely had one there and there because there's a spe they're actually special trades I won't go into vote why that they're very special trades and you, you're going for larger runners with those two trades there so we're executing here but when we're executing on these charts we've got a smaller stop and that's great because you've only got a stop of um, uh, uh, 3750 plus say five dollars so you've got a stop there of only 30 uh, sorry forty two dollars fifty maximum cost okay and yet look at the returns you can get on these now when you jump up to a two tick rank coast looking at the same uh, market with the two tick okay our stop is jumping up around an extra 12 13 14 dollars okay um, in that market now the yen. let's just go to uh, the end there's some great trading during the globex session for an example once again I want to be trading in the direction of this particular uh, anchor chart which I've got just right let me just pull that out is it gonna expand for me there we go okay I want to be trading in the direction there's a little methodology we use there we, we make sure we are trading in the direction of the higher time frame now once again what's our target now each one of these step ups by the way is is worth uh, one tick okay or one pip if you were trading uh, uh, a forex contract so what we're after ideally is eight tick moves now here one two three four five six seven now we only touch seven which means I'm only going to be locking in three now this is where you want to learn where to recognize the start of a new trend and that is down here now Gan who is famous okay so if ever you tried to study Gan it can be really confusing but the, the one takeaway I got out of Gan's work was this as he says the safest place to look for a new trend is at the end of the first correction in a new swing meaning you're looking to take the trade if you want to go for a really large run a big runner you trade the first pullback following a breakout in a new trend okay and that is okay see this trend here that is right there okay these are the ones that will give you if you want to go with a great runner these are the ones that will give you the runner now at the on the other hand you had a 2b there 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 so you had two B's all the way now remember you're only after four or five of these a day maybe even three if you pick up some of these runners so traders I've just shown you the potential and this is as I mentioned this is the two tick rank and this is uh, right here we're just going back here um, let me just get back uh, to the uh, New York hours so I just flick here so what we've got here this is the New York hours now what about these here well in fact these are just very quick scope I'm not interested well it'd be nice to get a much bigger runner but what I'm looking for is that I want to get my, what I call my 2b trades which is one just there and I've also got there is actually a GAN trade okay I've got one there I've got one there that was not great but here is another good one okay now that's one of the GAN trades right there now for the for my members watching this I want you to remember that most GAN trades will be what we call the t20 dash ones okay so the first trade after a t20 will give you these really good runners if it's going to be successful it'll give you these runners okay so your t20 dash ones will give you those for uh, for those that aren't members just listening to these codes these are easy to learn setups however you start with one and we build from there so in conclusion traders I've shown you a lot of things here today uh, but what I really wanted to get across is this ain't rocket science 
you must be able to day trading by trading with the trend and when you're looking at the currency futures markets particularly in times of volatility there's still some great trends and they're still very very tradable and the margins are much lower than the equity futures contracts much lower okay so there's some great opportunities and when the market does settle down which it will we'll get through this is that once again still consider these markets and that is when they do slow down it becomes a lot easier to maybe trade to okay now it means you're going to need a couple of screens but uh, here well I've got a bank of six screens you don't have to go that far but you can do it with two screens and just look for what we call the two B's so so traders go and request my free books better still become a member of my program and I look forward to having you as a member thank you traders